So the reason I'm making this video right now is because it is almost 1 a.m. and I am currently directly across the street from where the shootings at Michigan State occurred. I am 21 years old and this is the second mass shooting that I have now lived through. 10 years and two months ago, I survived the Sandy Hook shooting. And when I was crouched in the corner in school in Newtown, Connecticut on 12, 14, 12, I was hunched in the corner with my classmates for so long that I actually got a PTSD fracture in my L4 and L5 in my right lower back. I now have a full-blown PTSD fracture that flares up anytime I am in a stressful situation or anything occurs that's aggressive like that. The fact that this is the second mass shooting that I have now lived through is incomprehensible. My heart goes out to all the families and the friends of the victims of this Michigan State shooting. But we can no longer just provide love and prayers. It needs to be legislation. It needs to be action. It's not okay. We can no longer allow this to happen. We can no longer be complacent. I'll forever be Sandy Hook strong and forever be Spartan strong. That TikTok is going viral because as she eloquently explained, the MSU shooting that took place last night where three people were killed and five more were injured isn't her first mass shooting. She survived Sandy Hook as well. Now, what's astonishing is that this isn't the only MSU student to see a second mass shooting. One MSU student, Emma Riddle, tweeted, 14 months ago, I had to evacuate from Oxford High School when a 15-year-old opened fire and killed four of my classmates and injured seven more. Tonight, I am sitting under my desk at Michigan State University once again, texting everyone I love you. When will this end? Now, that's not all because the auntie of two MSU students tweeted this, active shooter on MSU campus reported 23 minutes ago, still roaming next door to my nephew's dorm. He has taken cover. I'm waiting to hear. The same nephew that was in the classroom next door to the active shooter at Oxford High School November of 2021. Now, there's even more. As Insider reports, Jennifer Mancini, the mother of one MSU freshman, told the Detroit Free Press that she had just spent a year helping her daughter deal with losing two of her closest friends in the Oxford shooting where she was a senior. She said that she had PTSD, Mancini said, of her daughter, the Detroit Free Press reported. She said she can't believe this is happening again. So think about how insane that is. For multiple MSU students, this is not the first mass shooting that they've lived through. That's where we're at in the United States. But it's not just students at MSU who happen to live through multiple mass shootings. Other individuals around the country have also experienced this. For example, three friends who survived the Las Vegas shooting in 2017, where 60 people were killed at a country music festival, ended up surviving another mass shooting just two years later in 2019 at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, where three people were killed by a mass shooter. Also, veteran Brian Kelly survived two mass shootings within the span of one year, the Las Vegas shooting and then the shooting in Thousand Oaks, California at Borderline Bar and Grill, where a gunman killed 11 people in 2018. Now, another man actually experienced the same two mass shootings but wasn't as lucky as the last individual he survived the las vegas shooting but died in the shooting at borderline bar and grill the point is mass shootings in the united states are so common that people are living through multiple mass shootings that's where we're at now, let's get to some details about the MSU shooting. As the New York Times reports, the gunman first opened fire at Berkeley Hall, home to the university's College of Social Science, shortly before 8.30 p.m., killing two people. Chris Rosman, the interim deputy university police chief, said at a news conference on Tuesday morning. The gunman later moved to the Michigan State Student Union, a popular place for students to eat and study, where he killed a third person. The two buildings just minutes apart on Grand River Avenue were both unlocked and open to the public. Not long after the shooting began, the university sent an email alerting students, many of whom were in dormitories, libraries, and other campus buildings, to shelter in place or evacuate safely while the authorities searched for the shooter. After a three-hour manhunt, the university police said the gunman was found off campus around 11.30 p.m. and had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Shelter-in-place orders were lifted and students quickly returned to their homes or were reunited with their families. Now, at the time that I record this, not much is known about the shooter or his motives, but he was reportedly a 43-year-old loner, and he does have ties to the community, but that's really all that we know at this point in time. And now, this is the part of the video where I, as a political commentator, am supposed to 
come up with solutions, but I'm not going to do that. We already know solutions. I'm not going to entertain the arguments from bad faith actors about, oh my God, why did this happen? Maybe it's mental health. Maybe it's violent video games. Maybe it's a lack of prayer in schools. Maybe it's a lack of security. We know why this keeps happening. It's because guns. We have more guns than people, and until Congress actually takes meaningful action to reduce the number of guns, then this will keep happening. Period. End of story. And we don't even have to come up with some original solution. We can just copy Australia's homework because after a mass shooting in, I believe, 1996, they did gun reform and they haven't had a mass shooting since. So this isn't something that we need to keep pretending to feign ignorance over or trying to have this conversation that isn't happening in good faith with the other side. We know why it's happening and we know the solutions. It's a matter of whether or not we have the political will to implement the solutions. And obviously we don't. So this will keep happening and more and more people will experience multiple mass shootings so long as this continues to occur in this disgustingly violent country.